All right, guys, welcome back. Hope that you, uh, hope you guys came up with the, the right guess here on what color we're going with this wood stove. Today, we're going to be painting it. I don't know if you can hear that. That's uh, the paint. We went with a uh, Stove Bright product that we're not sponsored by them. I went and bought this stuff. FYI. It's a high temperature stove paint, and it's great for wood stoves. We're going to completely transform this thing. Um, I don't believe that this log cabin is getting its due. It's not being centered, or centered. It's, this log cabin is not being portrayed. This log cabin is not getting enough attention, so I'm going to make this thing a whole different color to make that thing pop out. Stay tuned. It's going to look like this right now. Ha! Like I'm going to do that. You're going to all sit through this whole thing. All right. Got my paint. Proper PPE. Get your glasses on. And start painting. And we'll paint our fingers. You want to go in nice even strokes. You don't want it to pool up in any one spot, so go light. Go many times light. Dries pretty quick, but I, I let it dry a little bit between coats. Because you don't want any runs in this stuff. That looks like it looks garbage. I do what's called a crosshatch motion, which is you go in one direction at an angle, and you go in a different direction at a different angle to get all those little dimples in the metal. Just apply this to wood as well, the same way. When you're painting the wood stove or painting wood. Oop. Almost took it out. Alright, you guys ready to see this color? cracks and crevices as much as you can. This little plastic doohickey thing, I, I can't remember where I got it. It's just a cheap little thing, but it, well, it makes it like carrying a, a spray paint gun. So. What do you guys think? This color's going to hold out. It's going to look good. I don't know what it says on the instructions for how far you're supposed to hold this away. Gauge it. You, I mean, that's the best way to do it. You just want to gauge it and see. I'm usually about three to four inches away from it. Maybe six inches, depending on the area. If you got to apply a lot of, if you got to go at it at a lot of different angles, get further away. That way the mist can actually cover and you're not throwing a bunch of paint at one time. 
So I'll get like this, and I'll get way back, and then I'll just hit it at a different angle. Because you just don't want runs. Runs look like garbage. And it's easier to avoid runs if you're not in a hurry. Just don't be in a hurry. Paint dries pretty quick. talking a lot during this, but I'll probably fast forward for you so you don't have to listen to me. What do you think so far? <coughs> Watch out for drips. You don't want that. Tragedy 
Tragedy of uh, Tragedy averted. That tip was clogged and man it, it was not even wanting to come off. Come unplugged. Oh my gosh. That's gonna look so badass guys. You have no idea. Oh, I love it. Nice even strokes. Go at it from one direction once the first time. And then go at it from a different direction the next time you hit it. It helps you get all those little cracks and crevices. You really gotta contort get in there and get it in there right. I like to cut in the sides before I do the whole thing. Here we go. Nice even stroke. Don't rush it. Hold your hold your can close to the metal, but not too close. And evenly go across like this. Don't do this. Even strokes across. Follow the follow the. the Follow the metal, or follow your surface that you're painting. This works with all painting. So, always start out your spray off of the, the project that you're painting. Just even strokes, nice light even strokes. It doesn't need to be a lot on here the first time. So this is just, just getting it to coat. Just getting something to stick to. Go through this again on a second coat. We'll go at a different angle, we'll go up and down. We'll get areas that we didn't get before. It's called a crosshatch method. Now, again, I'm not looking for complete coverage on this right now. I'll come back and hit it again. Possibly two, two more times, but I won't have to go as in detail as this time. I'm trying to get a lot of that taken care of right now. Turned out pretty good, I think. I like the color. Now 
I know what you're going to say is, well, it's just going to get dirty and dark and it's going to get all that dust in there and soot, stuff like that. I don't care. That's what I'm hoping for. Because then that'll really make it pop out against this light color. I want this to look like an old porcelain, you know, wood stove, even though it's not porcelain. I just love the look of it. So there you have it guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think of the color. Um, I think it's beautiful, I don't care what you think, just kidding. I do care, but not really. This thing's really cool. I hope you can see this, and I hope this really comes through in this video, but I'll zoom in here in just a second for you to look at and enjoy. But thanks again for watching. Please remember to hit that thumbs up for us. You know, hit the bell for notifications, subscribe to us if you haven't already. And uh, for Pete's sake, get out there and start living your dreams. Have a good one, guys. All right, here it is. There's the finished product. Oh, that light is glaring pretty bad.